Hi, everybody. I'm Tony Kahn, the producer and director of Morning Stories from WGBH in Boston. I was thinking the other day about how many different ways we have of saying goodbye to each other. Goodbye and so long, catch you later, if you're looking for something that's more open-ended, and that whole range of emotions between see ya and farewell. As I've gotten older, I've begun to use the phrase, take care. In fact, I can't think of a single situation from a conversation with a stranger to parting with an old friend where the phrase, take care, doesn't seem like the last right thing to say. Well, one of our favorite contributors, Betsy Bunn, dropped by with a story from her early days as a hospice worker about what it means to say goodbye and take care of ourselves and of each other. I hope you'll enjoy her story. We call it See to the Animals. Connie was dying, and only six goats remained. We also found a small flock of chickens, three guinea hens, and an unknown number of dogs and cats. They kept moving too much to count. Connie didn't know how many there were either. She simply insisted that none of them be put down or taken to the pound. I don't need emotional support, my dear, she told me firmly. Just see to the animals till they're all accounted for. We agreed to do our best. Connie's farm had been there long before the zoning laws developed her neighborhood into a part of Greater Boston. There was no one left either interested in her goats or legally entitled to take them. Besides, they were old and well past giving milk. One of the nurses took the guinea hens, another took the chickens. After seeing their big eyes and hearing their soft baaaaaz, a family that came to pick up a dog actually went for one of the goats. But Connie balked. Goats were herd animals, she said, and would die if isolated. The family chose a dog instead. After three weeks, only the goats remained. Connie stayed, too, determined to take care of them or die trying. The hospice board of directors had asked to be kept in the loop. And that March, I got a phone call from one of the members, a local businessman and an observant Jew. I got a home for your goats, he said, all of them. They can go to the Sisters of Bethany. I'll help you find a truck. The next Saturday, we pulled up in two pickup trucks. Propped up in a chair on the porch, Connie looked on, pale but peaceful. She died at home two days later. It was only then that I became curious how an observant Jewish businessman knew about the Sisters of Bethany. He told me that the stresses of his business were sometimes overwhelming and that the sisters had offered him their guest house, their simple meals, their grounds for wandering in peace, and their prayers. They observed a vow of poverty and grew much of their own food on their small working farm. Their ministry was outreach to prisoners, but they also know that bars aren't the only prisons. They've saved my sanity. They'll take good care of you goats. You might want to take a ride out there yourself. I did. I visited the goats. I walked the farm. And I said a quiet prayer for Connie, for the sisters and their prisoners, and for us all. That was Betsy Bunn with today's morning story, See to the Animals. I'm here in the uh, back 40, right next to our very small corporate barn with my favorite flock member, Gary Mott. How you doing, Gary? Tony, why is it so important to fulfill people's dying wishes? Maybe it's a way of expressing how hard it is to say goodbye, that you, you want to at least hold on to that obligation, and that's a way of 
holding on to them. Holding on to the memory. Yeah. I mean, we, we do find it very hard to say goodbye. I wonder, though, your response to that. Was there someone in your family who had a dying wish that everybody felt they had to follow through on? Well, my grandfather passed away about 20 years ago, and he left a uh, small bit of farmland in Nebraska Hmm. to my father and his brothers and sister with the express wish that the proceeds from farming the land would be used to get the family together on a regular basis. To bring together basis. the flock. <laughs> to bring together the flock. <laughs> so you, you've attended, uh, I would assume, some of these gatherings. I have. I never knew there was this kind of thing in your life. I come from farm stock. Yeah? I do. Uh-huh. The people who no longer are alive that were part of my life are still part of me. I haven't said goodbye to them, and in some ways they're taking care of me. Speaking about saying goodbye... Um, Sadly, but with enormous gratitude, it is time for us to say goodbye to Ipswich, who have been our sponsors for this podcast pretty much since the start. Ipswich, our funder, thank you so much for your help. You're a leader in file transfer software, as all of our listeners know, and they can still reach you at ipswitch.com. This is not, of course, the end. We, perhaps even more than ever, count on the support that we've gotten from our listeners. What we have here is a family. It certainly feels like that. And a family budget that we got to keep going. We've gotten 41 contributions, Mm -hmm. totaling $1,600 thereabouts. And we hope there will be more to come. Recently, we gave a call to one of our contributors, Enrico DePaulis. He's in the clinical drug trial business just outside of uh, Philadelphia. I was stuck in traffic, and I'm sitting there, and I heard you and Gary come on and talk about, hey, if anyone can donate, it would be really helpful. And I said to myself, what in the heck? How come I have not donated to this yet? And it really bothered me. Oh. I actually use a lot of the stories that you guys uh, talk about and put up. I, I talk to my employees about them. I just felt like, wow, geez, I've learned so much over the year from different people around the world, I think, you know, at least I can do is contribute. Enrico, thank you. Thank you on behalf of all the people who've told us stories. Hearing some of these these stories from around the world, I sit there and go, wow, it's amazing what people have to go through, you know, on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. The most recent one that really touched me was the one with the, um, the mother and the family tree. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure what to expect when I started listening to the story. They're talking about how they planted this tree together, and then eventually her son goes, off to war, and then he dies over there. And it's just, I was like, whoa. It affected me for a long time, actually. A couple of days I was sitting there going, geez, I kept thinking about that family. Enrico, her name was Katrina, and when her story came in, it took my breath away. She just brought me right there. The, the stories that we get from people let us know what it's like for at least a minute to walk in somebody else's shoes, to be the other guy. I love the fact that all these stories that kind of interrelate, and it, it makes me think a lot every day about just what I'm doing here and and, and my impact on people, Mm -hmm. either at the level that I'm at as as well as my clients and my family. I mean, it's just amazing. One other thing I wanted to tell you about Katrina's story. Mm -hmm. She wrote after we had done her story, and she said, I just want to thank you for not having put the story in a political context. And that's exactly the point of these stories. It is not about the politics, you know, whether you're for or against something. It's about what people on either side experience as human beings. And can we understand that part of it? Can we understand that part of, of each other's Exactly. You know, I mean, lives? you know, when I was listening to the story, I wasn't even thinking about whether I was for or against the war. I was thinking about, wow, this, pa- this family dealing with this. Yeah. Okay. It changed my life, actually, I think, to get a view into other people's worlds change my life. Thank you, Enrico. Well, thank you, Tony. Take care. Right, bye-bye. Bye. Enrico de Paul uh very thoughtful guy and, and, of course, a very generous one. WGBH.org slash Morning Stories. There's a couple links there that make it incredibly easy to uh, donate and support. And even if you don't want to part with a penny, there's plenty else to click on there at the website, uh, including videos uh, that are on YouTube and uh, pictures we've been getting from our contributors that are really stories in and of themselves on our Flickr account. So next week, Tony? Yep. Right next to the barn uh, with our next podcast. As soon as they slop these hogs. <laughs> <laughs>
Take care.